Hey guys, Paul here. So I've come to a bit of an unfortunate realization recently. Being a Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG player kind of sucks. Now, I know it's going to sound extreme, and hear me out so you can understand exactly what I mean by that. This is not a video where I'm going to be talking about old school Yu-Gi-Oh! versus modern Yu-Gi-Oh! or like the state of the format right now. No, I'm talking specifically about the experience of being a TCG player versus being an OCG player, primarily in Japan. So, in case you've been living under a rock, the 25th anniversary Tokyo Dome event has been happening in Japan, and we've gotten a lot of really exciting announcements from it. There's obviously been the sort of Chronicle Saga thing, where it's like these anime shorts of a lot of prominent Yu-Gi-Oh! archetypes, Charmers, Sky Strikers, you know, Albaz, all that stuff. And Konami's even forming their own animation studio, so it looks like there could be potential for more stuff like that in the future. We've also gotten glimpses of a Yu-Gi-Oh! sort of VR game or experience that they might be working on. We've also got, like, that they're going to be, you know, remastering old uh, Game Boy Color and PS1 games that they're going to release on Steam and Nintendo Switch. So that's going to be really neat, among a bunch of other stuff, right? And it kind of got me to thinking. Japan gets it way better than we do with Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's not just actually stuff from this, like, Tokyo Dome event. It's actually just always been that way. And I've actually even been to Japan and kind of lived a bit of that experience of what it's like to kind of be a Yu-Gi-Oh fan in Japan and, like, play Yu-Gi-Oh and go to card shops and stuff like that. And I wanted to talk about it a bit, as well as how I think that, you know, Konami in some ways could really improve the Yu-Gi-Oh experience just of being a Yu-Gi-Oh player and a fan here in the West. So, uh, man, where to start? Because... There's really a lot to break down here. I think first and foremost, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! product situation. This is the one that I think most people watching this video will know about. In the OCG, products do not work the same way that they do here. They get some of the same sets, but they also get a lot of different sets. Of course, their products are ahead of ours in terms of like the schedule and stuff, but they'll get things like the Quarter Century Duelist box that are just really cool reprint sets that have lots of neat things. Their mainline sets have the mixed rarity system that's been a big topic of debate in the community recently around like, you know, releasing cards as like a high rarity version and then maybe like a low rarity version in the set. So you can get the low rarity version that's usually cheaper, more accessible, as opposed to the high rarity version that's like a lot blingier and maybe more expensive, but either way, they're kind of both the same functional card. Comparing that to the TCG, of course, where sometimes, you know, rarities will get like kind of spiked, like a card that was like a super rare in the OCG might be a secret rare in the TCG, people don't always like that. But, you know, I think that the mixed rarity system is obviously a very good thing. Uh, it's been, it, it works in games like Pokemon. I think it'd be really cool to see that tried out here. But it's more than just that. I think that OCG products just kind of have this air of feeling like they care a little more about the Yu-Gi-Oh! player experience, the opening experience. For instance, I recently opened the Quarter Century Duelist box on the channel, and it was pretty freaking cool. Um, not just because, like, it was a cool reprint set that had, like, access code talker and a bunch of other, like, neat new cards and you could get stuff in quarter century rarities or other different rarities in the set. That was neat, but it was more like, when I opened it, the product design was nicer, the, uh, product actually came with this, like, cutout deck box that you can put together. It even has, like, a part where you can, like, label it with your name and all that. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it came with this frame, one of these like magnetic frames and a sleeve. So like if you pull something really cool, like a really rare quarter century card that's valuable, you'll actually already have a frame to put it in. And even just the packaging was a lot nicer, just better colors, um, like print quality for the cards tends to be better. My experience with opening TCG cards has been a bit mixed, especially in recent years. I don't think this is like, you know, Konami's fault because they're not the one really doing the at the printing facility, but it feels like quality control has kind of been a little like iffy. Colors, cutting, corners, all that stuff is not maybe as good in the TCG. Now granted, that's something that could also easily happen in Japan. I don't think that's objectively better because I mean, I haven't opened enough of that to see like a bet what a bad day maybe looks like there. But that's just one thing, right? It's just the products kind of seem to be a little bit better. There's also the card shop experience. I think card shops in Japan, obviously it seems like card gaming and Yu-Gi-Oh! is more popular there relative to how it is like in, say, America. But when I went to card shops in Japan, I felt like they were just much more decorated with Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. Huge cutouts, wall installations, you know, things like that. Mats installed like onto tables and just way more like singles and products and stuff for sale. It felt more vibrant and more like thriving. And it wasn't just actually at card shops either. There were different promotional things that just happened like on the streets of Japan that you could just participate in. For instance, at 7-Eleven um, food stores, you could buy three Haichus and they were doing a little promotion where if you bought three Haichus, you got a 
promo Yu-Gi-Oh card of your choice. I got this really cool Marshmallow card. There are all sorts of others, Blackluster Soldier and Buster Blader and Dark Magician and things. And um, it was like, that wasn't a thing where you were like at a card shop or really having to do anything with that. You just happened to be at a gas station and you know, you get this, right? I think that's really neat. In addition to that though, they even have, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh in like vending machines in some places, Yu-Gi-Oh in sticker machines. They even had pop-up shops where you could like, you know, have the, there was like a pop-up shop that was happening in bookstores where you could get some exclusive stuff like related to the Yu-Gi-Oh manga, as well as like there was a pop-up restaurant that was happening sometime last year. I wasn't able to actually go to it, but it was where you could like buy a, like order a, an order of Hungry Burger and stuff. And I thought that was really cool. And so it just overall felt a little bit more like, man, being a Yu-Gi-Oh fan in Japan seems really freaking nice. There's also sort of a difference in, I think, how Japan handles promotion of the game compared to how it's handled here in America. It seems like the TCG has largely become a bit decoupled from the anime. I don't know if this is just my observation. I don't know how much like legal, you know, hoop jumping is going on there with why they maybe aren't able to do it as much in the TCG. But it sort of feels like they don't really like connect the characters in the anime as much to like the card games. Um, and so that's something that, that just sort of felt like a difference. And in addition to that, there are a lot of exclusive just accessories and stuff that come out in Japan. You get a lot more of those really cool like sleeves that people like to double sleeve with. You know, like a lot of card shops now have been importing those sleeves from the OCG, like from Japan, but like there's just so many different designs, different like fusion and synchro and designs like that. And like different archetypes will get them. We've gotten more of those now, like with like the gold pride accessories, the hero accessories, the Albaz accessories. So like that's been improving in recent years, but Japan gets so, so many of those. Like you just wouldn't believe how many in addition to more play mats that are like just easily available for sale. It kind of feels like it takes a lot of time, I guess, for this stuff to get, um, I want to say translated or imported, but I mean, like, it's a lot of, it, it feels like we just don't get as much of that here in the States or just here in the West. And it kind of makes it unfortunate because it sometimes does feel like as a Yu-Gi-Oh player here, when you buy your packs, you're just getting your packs and it's like, okay, hope you pull what you need. Whereas there, it's like, here, you know, we'll give you a deck box so you can, like, keep anything cool that you pull. You can, like, keep it in your deck box and it's labeled and the quality is really nice. Or, you know, here, here's a frame where, like, if you pull something good, you can frame it up because you might want to do that because you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Or maybe you're not even actually at, like, the card shop or whatever. You just happen to be at the gas station and you run into this and you get a cool card. It might be worth something. It might not. It might just be a really cool collectible. Um, there are even a lot of those things like the Kaiba briefcase that took a really long time to finally kind of get imported over here. They've had stuff like that for years. I remember things like the enemy controller, things like the, uh, like the scapegoat tokens, just a lot of stuff that is more prominent over there. So now to bring this conversation back down to earth, as I've been doting on Japan, you might be thinking, okay, well, you know, that's just the way it is. Of course, it's going to be more popular in Japan. That's kind of the parent country that, you know, made the game or whatever. Um... And I think that a lot of that is true. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh is, of course, going to be more popular there than I think it is here. But I also think that Konami has a lot more faith that it will be popular there. And so that they so they sort of, like, will skip out on, like, products here. Like, for instance, something that we've never really gotten in the TCG are the Master Guides. For those who don't know, that's, like, when they release those lore books every few years that sort of explain the lore of a lot of different archetypes and stuff. We don't ever get those in the TCG. So if you like a certain, you know, TCG archetype or something, you won't really be able to like find out what the story is until someone goes into one of those Japanese lore books and translates it and like throws it on Twitter or Reddit or something like that. But it sort of sucks that that isn't the case, right? Like, why not, right? And then in addition to that, there are a lot of other things that we just kind of won't get over here. Um, I'm a huge fan, as you guys know, of like, you know, those like physical accessories. Like, you know, I've got the, uh, be careful with this thing. Like I've got the pot of greed and stuff like that. But in so many cases with that stuff, you have to like order it from Japan and have it imported over here. Konami's never really like, you know, kind of brought a lot of that stuff and like sold it regularly. And some of this is not like Konami's doing, right? Some of it's like a Bandai products or it's something that they don't really have the license over. There's also going to be, of course, like differences in terms of like what products might sell in Japan just may not sell over here. Maybe it's not like worth bringing over, right? So I don't want to just make it seem like, you know, it just... Our Konami sucks, and that's just the end of the story. But I do think that doing more of that stuff could help Yu-Gi-Oh be more popular and feel more kind of rewarding to play. And it's something that um, I hope that, you know, anybody who ever gets the opportunity to go to Japan, really see what Yu-Gi-Oh is like over there. It feels different, but it also feels like something that maybe could, like, it could work over here. And it's not that there are, you know, things are all doom and gloom. We do still get really big events 
he, at least here in America, YCS events always feel like they're kind of breaking numbers and that's really popular. And there are like, you know, other good things. I still like going to the card shop, hanging out, doing sneak peeks. I did the Phantom Nightmare one just last weekend. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, you goes miserable over here. I just think that it could be a little bit better and um, not as many people really know about that. I think when people think of the OCG, in their mind, they just think, okay, they get the products first and they have the format with Maxi, which we hate or whatever. But there's a lot more to it and I would like to see more of those products come over and hopefully maybe more of that card shop culture and kind of slightly more mainstream culture maybe follow along with it. I'll be realistic, I don't think it's all like, you know, sunshine and rainbows. I'm sure they've got their own problems that OCG players would more than happily tell me about. And I know that it's not, you know, easy to just bring everything over, right? Like I get it, Konami's got hoops to jump through. But it'd still be really cool. It just feels like being a Yu-Gi-Oh! player in Japan is a little bit more celebrated than it is over here. That kind of sucks. Anyways, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think about it all in the comments. Pass turn.